good afternoon here we have gathered to hear the thought provoking uh, speech by our uh, uh, coordinator on conventional and genomic approaches to the improvement of spices dr t prasad there is no introduction needed he is one of our distinguished tnu alumni his research work talks lot about his volume of work in his uh, 20 years of experience he is having more than 100 research publications in highly rated journals and also he is having his credit uh, to uh, um, high yielding and disease resistant varieties of seven and unique registration of nbpgr germplasm he is continuing you can refer his papers he is continuing his uh, work on genomics and host plant relationship on the uh, many diseases which is a very important uh, aspect to be addressed these days and he has also participated in the think tank meeting he is giving lot of guidance and suggestions to the department and uh, dr sir we are uh, very much following it and we have taken into consideration while formulating our pg research work so on behalf of much taking much of time i hand over to dr prasad and uh, uh, i welcome everybody and uh, to uh, this uh, uh, lecture please make a note of it students and scientists and uh, i wholeheartedly welcome everybody for this lecture thank you respected dr d prasad project coordinator i crip uh, spices icr indian institute of spices research kolikot kerala professor head department of spices and plantation crops and uh, dr k venkateshan professor horticulture and other uh, uh, assistant professors associate professors and uh, students of uh, department of spices and plantation crops good afternoon to all i am here uh, to give uh, introductory remarks, uh, remarks about, about our uh, uh, that is a project coordinator dr d prasad we know very well uh, he is the alum one of the alumni of our uh, university and um, i think uh, he, he was senior to me when i was doing my uh, phd degree program one year senior to me uh, so i know about him very well and uh, he is a very intelligent uh, scientist uh, and uh, uh he has 20 years research experience in crop improvement of horticultural crops he has published more than 100 uh, research articles and uh, he has bagged many awards and honors uh, you should know students because uh, uh, when we invite uh, these type of um, that is um, yeah, eminent uh, scientist uh, uh, you will get uh, motivated the you will get motivated and you you will think that we should uh, become Uh, a person like this uh, person so it is very very important uh, and uh, he has bagged uh, yeah, as fellow national academy of agriculture sciences new delhi india uh, during 2020 and uh, he is awarded with icr fagrudin ali ahmed dahar award during 2019 and recognized as fellow of indian society of uh, hsi sorry uh, horticulture society of india new delhi then uh, ndo research fellowship 2017 government of australia and uh, he has awarded with the horticulture society of india dp goes young scientist award the horticulture society of india new delhi and um, and uh, he has recognized as fellow of iss indian society of spices and uh, he has uh, uh, bagged the best research paper award uh, in uh, in hs mehta memorial award for best research paper uh, then uh, national academy of biological sciences best research paper award for the year 2012 uh, in nabs chennai tamil nadu and the boys uh, boys cast fellow uh, he bagged that fellow also in department of from department of spices and technology goi and uh, js pruti award for the best research paper in joas indian society of spices during 2006 and uh, he's the he was the finalist young scientist award program during 93rd indian science congress uh held at uh, hyderabad and uh, he is the phd topper from tamil nadu agriculture university coimbatore during 2005 and gold medalist at, uh, from tamil nadu agriculture university coimbatore tamil nadu i have given a brief introductory remarks but uh, he is very intelligent and uh, uh, as madam uh, told he has done a wonderful research in genomics and other uh, breeding program with these few introductory remarks i welcome dr prasad uh, 
to give the guest lecture on conventional and genomics approaches to the improvement of spices and regarding this uh, guest lectures this was started from hcndra koyamathur first we, we are the uh, we are the pioneers uh, in the guest lecture uh, uh, starting of guest lecture after that only it was taken by uh, spgs uh, i uh, that is uh, dr vengadesan knows about this illa vengadesan namada first spices department only started after that ipo vandu avanga nama pandradella apdiye eduthukranga so uh, yeah one event uh, one program uh, one department one program idla vandu namma da first start pannom in the program adavadhu whenever we invite the scientist for the thesis evaluation and um, uh, that is a uh, மற்ற ப்ரோக்ராம்ஸ்க்கு எப்பப்ப கூப்பிடுறோமோ அவங்கள வந்து ஒரு ஒரு நம்ம வந்து லெக்சர் கொடுக்க சொல்லுவோம் அதே நம்ம நம்மளே நிறைய டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபைவ் லெக்சர்ஸ் நம்ம பண்ணிருந்தோம் அதுக்கப்புறம்தான் இட் வாஸ் என்ன சொல்றது அவங்க வந்து டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் டீன் எஸ்பிஜிஎஸ் இந்த இதை வந்து அவங்க எடுத்துட்டு இப்ப அவங்க இதுல போயின் இருக்கு சோ ஐ எம் வெரி ஹாப்பி டு டெல் அபவுட் திஸ் ஆல்சோ வித் திஸ் இன்ட்ரடக்டரி மாஸ் ஐ வெல்கம் அவர் சீஃப் கெஸ்ட் டாக்டர் டி பிரசாத் ப்ராஜெக்ட் டீன் professor in department of spice and plantation crafts professor dr venkateshan and uh, other faculty members here and uh, my dear students thank you ma'am for a nice introduction and uh, i am happy to be here uh, uh, back in uh, my college and very privileged uh, to be here usually i used to sit in the other side and uh, happy to be here uh, this side and uh, Uh, my how many of you know indian institute of spices research most of you from spice and plantation crafts right okay good okay so i am from indian institute of uh, spices research presently heading all india coordinated uh, research project on spices so my topic for uh, today's presentation is uh, conventional and genomic approaches uh, to the improvement of spices so before uh, going to the lecture so a uh, lot of young people here you are going to start your career try to concentrate on one aspect right don't get uh, deviated from production post harvest technology breeding genomics so from msc onwards try to concentrate on one aspect if you are interested in breeding try to specialize in that area okay don't get uh, like deviated from here there so so that's what like we have learned like that from my msc onwards like uh, msc it was brinjal breeding phd it is again a paprika breeding so after joining icr service also so i am concentrating on breeding aspect like if you ask me organic farming natural farming no i don't know anything about that so so as you are in the beginning of your career try to concentrate on one particular aspect so with this uh, start introduction if you look at uh, spices why spices are important right so like uh, spices are uh, you all know it is uh, uh, low volume high value crops right and uh, it is uh, known for its nutraceutical and pharmaceutical properties so that uh, uh, that's why uh, spices are very important and it is used in food the cosmetics and pharma industries and you take any spice right starting from black pepper garlic uh, any spice it has uh, nutraceutical and medicinal uh, values any spice you name any spice it has its own uh, uh, medicinal values so as per uh, uh, iso standards international uh, standards organization 109 spices are 109 crops are categorized as spices right as per spices board act 53 crops are categorized as spices and uh, why again spices are uh, important you see Uh, spices are cultivated in uh, 4.3 million hectares and the total production of spices 11.26 million tons more importantly the export earnings so the presently like uh, the export earnings from spices is 4 billion dollars it means 37000 crores spices are exported from india and uh, above all 
19 million uh, uh, people are uh, dependent on spices farming if you look at uh, how many farmers are cultivating spices either sweet seed spices or major spices 19 million uh, farmers are uh, cultivating uh, spices and this is why spices are very important for indian economy as i said uh, last year we exported uh, 4 billion us dollars close to 30000 crores right if you look at uh, uh, export among horticulture crops 41% of the horticulture crops are spices export right even among agriculture crops 8% of the total agriculture crops are spices so that's why spices are very very important but if you see uh, the projection for uh, 2030 is 10 billion dollars the government of india has very ambitious target of uh, 10 billion dollars uh, by 2030 it means like we have to achieve close to 75 80000 crores more than export like you can also see the domestic value of spice market the presently it is 1 lakh 42000 crores but uh, 2027 it is going to be 2 lakh 70000 crores that's why spices are important more than fruits vegetables floriculture so you 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 should be very proud to work in uh, department of spice and plantation crops students because always i have seen many many universities spices and plantation crops are marginalized department so always importance is given to fruits vegetables spices are considered as a very very small department but the statistic says entirely different things it is more than uh, like what you export floriculture export you, you see it is negligible it is like only 500 600 crores but we export 30000 crores even even uh, like uh, the mango export or banana export so uh, spices contributes uh, tremendously to the export values and as i said the target for 2030 is 10 billion dollars that is 75 to 80000 crores that uh, to achieve the target like uh, you youngsters have to contribute tremendously for this uh, export purpose and it is not possible by merely exporting the raw spices so we have to concentrate these are all the some, some of the future areas nutraceuticals uh, cosmeceuticals natural colors and natural flavors you see the market potential of each of the industries it is tremendous so the future all your MSc programs or PhD programs are one, once you go out of the uh, department and when you start your own programs. So these are all the areas like we have to target. And uh, as I said, spices are very, very important uh, uh, as far as uh, nutraceuticals are uh, uh, considered. Um, and uh, these are all the uh, nutraceuticals. We call it as a spiceuticals now. Um, terpenes, phenyl propanoids, diallyl heptanoids, and sulfur compounds. These are all the very uh, important spiceuticals. The major component, piperine, you know, uh, it is from the black pepper. So it is one of the major uh, exported uh, commodity from India, and it has very great uh, potential. And another one is curcumin. So again, another important uh, spiceuticals uh, we can concentrate. You can see downsides. Uh, uh, some of the like uh, patented uh, curcumin products from private industries. You can see curcufres. It is uh, uh, organic bioavailable curcumin. It means solvent free. Like if you if you if you want to extract a curcumin, you want inorganic solvent, right? So inorganic solvents has its own demerits. So many of the developed countries, they want solvent-free curcumin. You see, uh, some of the companies, they have patented this technology. It is a green technology. Without solvent, like you can extract the curcumin and it is patented. And, uh, and another issue with the curcumin is bioavailability. Like you can take as much as turmeric powder, but the problem, the availability of uh, curcumin is very very less okay so to enhance this bioavailability the curcumin has to be conjugated so it has to be 
attached to the some other compound so that the bioavailability of curcumin is more uh, one example is if you uh, if you attach curcumin with the piperin the bioavailability of curcumin is more and uh, another is curcumin and artemisin so if you conjugate the curcumin and artemisin uh, the bioavailability of curcumin is more so here are uh, uh, some of the uh, like curculagin curculong so lock so these are all the patented uh, technologies uh, and uh, spices uh, coming to uh, our topic today uh, what are all the challenges in uh, spices breeding uh, like unlike other uh, cereals uh, most of our crops are uh, long duration crops like it takes uh, many years to release a variety in the case of pepper uh, in the case of cardamom or uh, tree spices like nutmeg cinnamon it takes uh, 20 25 years 30 years to release a variety so that is one of the major issue um, and another issue is uh, 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 most of our crops are polyploids it is not uh, uh, diploids uh, polyploids like uh, turmeric we have triploids and tetraploids we don't have diploids that is the major issue in uh, turmeric and incompatibility is the other issue like you all know you might have studied ginger so ginger there is no seed set right because incompatibility operates at a different level it flowers but there is no seed set so that is example then sterility again uh, ginger because of uh, even the pollen viability is very very less so that's why there is no seed set in uh, ginger and uh, if you want to work on uh, the metabolites most of the metabolites are go governed by QTLs. It is not a single gene. Piperin is not controlled by a single gene. It is controlled by QTLs. So it is the cluster of uh, genes. So that is uh, another uh, issue. Then again, uh, uh, another issue is epistatic interaction. Uh, that is also creating uh, issues when you target uh, breeding program for nutraceuticals. And uh, spices are considered non-model crops so far not much genomic information is available so only off late like we are getting whole genome sequences from uh, uh, some of the crops especially from china so otherwise uh, uh, not much genomic information is available but having said that proactive nature of uh, our approach right should uh, able to solve all those uh, challenges so if you look at uh, opportunities like uh, spices are uh, highly valuable in uh, healthcare because of its uh, physiological effects strongly market driven then uh, more than that uh, the chemo diversity available in uh, india is very high like you know like most of our crops like black pepper turmeric even uh, some of the tree spices like nutmeg cinnamon has originated in india so the diversity is uh, very high. So that we have to potentially use that diversity. And the secondary gene pool, like uh, in the case of ginger, the primary gene pool, there is no resistance, resistant uh, source available. Uh, so we probably we have to target the secondary gene pool means uh, closely related species, right? So that we have to target. And another advantage, it is seed and vegetative propagation. So that is the advantage in the case of black pepper, uh, in the case of cardamom, like you develop a hybrids, then very it is very easy to maintain the heterosis through vegetative propagation. It is not available in other vegetable crops or other crops. So that is the advantage. Even in uh, turmeric, you develop a, a heterotic recombinants uh, hybrids, then it can be multiplied through uh, rhizomes. So that is the advantage. And uh, and probably we have to follow functional genomics and uh, metabolomics approach. So the, the first point, uh, as I said, the availability of uh, genetic uh, diversity. You know, uh, in any breeding program, uh, genetic uh, diversity is the first part, right? So uh, you can see these are all the uh, crops where center of origin is India, Piper nigrum. Uh, Elitaria cardamomum, 
then uh, garcinia cinnamon turmeric ginger all uh, the center of origin is in india it means like we have huge diversity available in the crop so we have to potentially exploit that uh, uh, diversity and uh, the national agriculture research system where indian institute of spices research and all asrp centers put together so we have close to 20000 gem blossom accessions are maintained in these crops uh, it is 19800 different centers including our coimbatore uh, indian institute of spices research all asrps put together so we have like 19800 accessions are maintained so that has to be characterized and we have to use it in our breeding programs and uh, this is the diversity available cardamom so it is a cross pollinated crops originated in western ghats you see the uh, uh, the diversity available flower character you take any character capsule character capsules per raceme uh, branching pattern of the uh, 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 caps uh, branching pattern of the sign so you take any character that much uh, genetic diversity is uh, available so that we have to uh, exploit it and uh, this is the uh, uh, diversity available in uh, turmeric turmeric you all know uh, like we have triploids we have tetraploids uh, 2n63 is available 2n84 is available 2n63 is triploid 84 is tetraploid so we don't have a diploid diploid uh, we have to identify so this is how we characterized our gem blossom by using flow cytometry you can see the the first one is a diploid uh, second one is a diploid the last one is a tetraploid so that much uh, diversity is available in turmeric so we have uh, like 84 triploids eight tetraploids and one aneuploids so it means like uh, the ploid level variation in turmeric is very high so the probably like we have to go for uh, developing hybrids or raising seedling progenies so so that we can create uh, more uh, variability in uh, turmeric and again in in uh, ginger so so far uh, uh, our understanding in ginger uh, was it is only diploid 2n is equal to 22 but uh, recently we could identify one uh, triploid from uh, northeast so you can see the last one is uh, red ginger uh, it is exotic red ginger but it is a uh, triploid 2n is equal to 33 so that is again the ploid level uh, variation in ginger and uh, secondary gene pool as i said uh, uh, we have to target secondary gene pool uh, piper like we have uh, 115 species of indian origin different piper species gingiber 24 species originated in indo malayan region curcuma about uh, 40 species cinnamon 25 species so that shows the uh, importance of uh, secondary gene pool where like uh, we have to concentrate on uh, those uh, secondary gene pool for either nutraceuticals or for resistance and uh, this is the importance of secondary gene pool uh, one is our uh, uh, curcuma aromatica lot of diversity and it has very very important uh, secondary metabolites and uh, another crop uh, black turmeric hope you all uh, studied about it curcuma kishia uh, it's known for its uh, camphor properties if you if you study the essential oil properties camphor is uh, camphor is the major uh, constituents and another uh, important crop mango ginger today morning uh, even uh, we had a discussion with uh, professor and head department of spice and plantation crops where uh, traditionally south indian question like we use mango ginger uh, pickles right so hope everybody uh, tested it um, but it has many other uh, uh, nutritional values so cftri mysore central food technological rep uh, food technological research institute mysore they have identified a compound which is uh, acting against gram positive and gram negative human bacteria right so uh, that is difuro q 
curcumin and all. So that is the compound they have identified from the turmeric, which is uh, uh, which acts against both gram positive and gram negative bacteria. Uh, and also we have identified many antibacterial uh, motifs in curcuma amada. And even uh, the University of Guelph, where Dr. Jay Shankar and his group, so they are also working on uh, uh, curcuma amada. And uh, as I said, like we have huge diversity, right? Uh, how uh, like we are conserving the diversity? So the collection, especially this is exploration. So we go to different places, collect the important accessions. It is uh, targeted uh, exploration. We identify a character, then you go to the particular area, collect our requirement. So that is exploration. Then uh, characterization, as I said in uh, morning, uh, Viva, we have to use descriptors. So one is uh, NBBGR, National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources. They have descriptors for uh, most of the crops. So wherever NBBGR descriptors are not there, we have to use IPGRI descriptors. That is International Plant Genetic Resources Institute. Like presently, it is known as Bioversity Inter International. Earlier, it was known as IPGRI. Even they have like black pepper descriptor, cardamom descriptor. So we have to use those descriptors, especially for your like MSc PhD thesis. Like whatever the characters you record, better follow these uh, descriptors. And uh, one is like uh, morphological descriptors. Second one is like uh, your uh, molecular uh, markers. So the presently like uh, you use like codominant markers, SSRs and SNPs because uh, the dominant markers has its own uh, 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 like demerits. So try to concentrate on co-dominant markers like SSRs or SNPs or indel-based markers like insertion and deletion markers. So, and coming to the conservation aspect, as I said, like we have 20,000 germplasm accessions. Most of the accessions are conserved in the field gene bank, right? And also like uh, we have standardized protocols for cryopreservation and in vitro conservation. So. We have protocols for in vitro conservation of the germplasm and also cryer preservation. And some of the important accessions we have DNA bank. So where we extract the DNA and store under uh, minus 80 or minus 60 so that uh, in the case of any disputes, so we can get it from DNA gene bank and uh, study it. And uh, how like uh, you have characterized how you are going to document so documentation, once you identify like important accessions, straight away is like you can release it as a variety. So another one is uh, there is option with the National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources where you can register as important accessions. Once you identify accessions, so it can be registered with National Bureau of uh, Plant Genetic Resources and uh, try to have your own databases. So like whatever the characterization data available, uh, like put it in a database and this is how uh, the spices uh, breeding so we have both conventional and molecular approaches uh, to achieve our uh, target and uh, coming to uh, first breeding strategy in spices selection right like you have huge diversity how uh, you are uh, going to select so this is one uh, typical example, like you say, uh, like uh, black pepper, like, you know, uh, Karimunda types, right? Have you studied, right? Karimunda type. There are 100 uh, Karimunda types are available. So by studying all Karimunda types, this is the variety we released from Indian Institute of Spices Research. It is Subakara, right? The advantage of this variety is it has high essential oil you can see 7% essential oil. Generally, the black pepper, any variety, if you take essential oil is around 5%. So this has the advantage where it has 7% essential oil. More than that, wider adaptability. Like if you want a variety for uh, planes, 
if you want variety for open conditions if you want variety for high shaded conditions this is the variety where it performs uh, like uh, uh, well across the locations uh, and also like in the photograph you can see the source sink relationship you can see the number of spikes more than leaves right if you if you take other varieties like um, panur one or other high yielding varieties where the source sink the relationship is very less the number of leaves will be more number of spikes will be less here it is reverse so so that's how like we can put a selection pressure to identify the varieties and uh, this is another variety like iasr tevam uh, like you know uh, uh, like black pepper phytophthora is the major issue right so this is the variety which is tolerant to phytophthora this again a selection from uh, one type called neelamundi in uh, uh, kerala the advantage like uh, root regeneration capacity because phytophthora infects the roots so the advantage of this uh, variety is it uh, quickly regenerates uh, new new roots so the selection was mainly on that particular aspect uh, turmeric again uh, this is a variety released from indian institute of spices research where uh, um the advantage of this variety is it is only 6 months short duration variety 180 days because uh, uh, you have many uh, turmeric varieties cultivated like it takes like 240 250 days so 8 months 9 months so now like farmers are facing the problem of lab labor shortage like irrigation water so this is where it fit, fits into your cropping cycle within 6 months you can complete one uh, crop and besides that it has stable curcumin and uh, tolerant to nematode and you can see this is uh, this is the first time uh, like we evaluated this variety in erode right so you can see the uh, this all around the tall types no it is salem local type you can see the the in between the, the the small ones right so that is the pragati so first time when we tried the farmer said no 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 sir it won't work here i am going to plow it won't work here then we asked him to retain till harvest but after harvest if you see the the yield level is double that of that the tall types so that is again the source sink relationship in the case of uh, short duration types uh, the above ground portion and rhizome portion are almost equivalent if above ground portion is 1 kg rhizome will be 1 kg but in the case of tall types like it is one uh, if above ground portion is 1 kg rhizome will be only 500 500 g so so that is the selection pressure we uh, we have put on short duration and source sink relationship and identified uh, this uh, particular variety and uh, this is how Uh, we have released many high curcumin varieties like isr pratiba pragati rajendra sonia mega turmeric these are all uh, some of the high curcumin types released only through selection and this is again uh, one unique uh, turmeric selection where uh, narendra kaldi it is from uh, uh, kumar ganj faisabad nduat where you can see the 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 mother rhizome is uh, very big so it is very very unique and even the flavor uh, profile also uh, very very typical so it is again uh, i take example of erode where we have given it for trial so one farmer took the dry dry rhizome samples for powdering so uh, after powdering no so the the neighbors uh, were asking what is that uh, uh, turmeric it means that uh, flavor profile is entirely entirely different and uh, this again another selection uh, nutmeg you know uh, whether it is monoecious or dioecious okay dioecious means good so it is separate right so like we have to go for uh, budding so that we can uh, develop uh, high yielding uh, types this is a particular variety released from uh, konkan one of our asrp centers uh, so both are monoecious types it means same tree produces uh, female and male flowers both konkan uh, shanyukta 
and uh, konkan sugandha so both are uh, monaceous types and uh, this is uh, again uh, another example uh, cumin again a simple simple uh, selection um, uh, like cumin you know the fusarium wilt is the major issue right so the cumin wilt it is called so the entire cumin is wiped out so 2006 this uh, particular uh, variety was released from our uh, gujarat center uh, jagudan uh, 2023 it occupies uh, 95% of the cumin area in the country only one variety which occupies uh, 95% of the cumin uh, area in the country it is again a simple selection because why i am uh, showing all these examples like the importance of selection pressure how you look at the uh, selection procedure and uh, in the in the case of uh, uh, turmeric again like so far uh, we are concentrating on curcumin right curcuminoids but uh, the curcuminoids has three different profiles like uh, curcumin dimethoxy curcumin bis dimethoxy curcumin all three together are called curcuminoids right so now in the pharmaceutical industries each curcuminoids has its own uh, like pharmaceutical value now companies are started asking for uh, we need varieties with high dimethoxy curcumin or high bis dimethoxy curcumin so we studied the curcuminoid profile of our turmeric and now we have very clear cut idea if you want high bis dimethoxy curcumin we have lines so so that's how like we have to characterize even our own germ plasm so that uh, it will be clear for uh, Uh, even pharmaceutical industries if they come forward for particular accessions like we can be ready with that another area is natural colors so now like uh, you see uh, like all your food colors are uh, coloring your beverages all artificial colors are used like uh, allura red tetrazine so these are all the compounds synthetic compounds used to color your food products so turmeric is the one crop which can replace the entire from light yellow to dark red so we have entire spectrum of colors so uh, morning uh, also we had discussion so we need to profile our entire turmeric germ plasm for different colors if because industry is now ready industry is re can even they can uh, fund uh, some of our programs so 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 we have to identify our turmeric germ germ plasm for different colors and uh, another uh, important selection what can what we have done is uh, ginger essential oil because you know indian gingers are considered as low in essential oil so it means like 1 to 1.5% only essential oil content of indian gingers now but industry requirement uh, is very high so we have collected uh, some of the ginger germ plasm from northeast where we have recorded even up to 4 percent essential oil so these are all uh, some of the you can see uh, 4.3 percent uh, essential oil compared to other types where it is only 1.1 1.5 percent and also you can see in, uh, six gingerol so the compound which gives the pungency to the gingerol six gingerol eight uh, eight gingerol six sogal so these are all the some of the compounds uh, this uh, particular collection from nagaland which has very high uh, gingerol and sogal content and uh, this is our uh, recent uh, selection from indian institute of spices research where we have released a variety called isr amrit it is a high yielding uh, uh, mango ginger uh, variety and uh, with uh, you know mango ginger where flavor is very important and the flavor of uh, mango ginger is because of myrcin so this uh, particular variety has high myrcin content of 55.54% so that is the importance of uh, selection coming to the uh, intragression breeding like if you have any doubt like you can uh, it is not like one way talking so you can stop me at any time right so even like whatever doubt you have like don't no need to hesitate right so coming to the 
intragression breeding or hybridization wide hybridization so this is the success story of hybridization you know panniur 1 is the hybrid developed in 1960s so presently it occupies almost 70% of the uh, black pepper area and uh, this is the one variety uh, like highly input responsive especially if you go to karnataka black pepper growing areas you cannot imagine so, so the, they harvest like uh, minimum like 25 to 50 kg fresh per vine so that much potential uh, it has highly input responsive so and also from indian institute of spices research we have released two two hybrids isr garimunda isr malabar excel which are uh, suitable for uh, high elevations especially if you go beyond 1000 1500 meters above mean sea level so these two varieties are uh, highly suitable and uh, this is our uh, recent variety isr chandra uh, like 6 uh, months back we have identified it is a triple cross right so it is a uh, the hybrid is hybrid 1 triple 17 uh that hybrid is again uh, back cross to one of its parent tommangudi because we want to integrate that particular uh, character into this genotype so it is a triple cross so and again uh, very very high yielding very long spikes and uh, this is a classical uh, example of pre breeding uh, like uh, piper also the 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 resistant source to phytophthora is uh, very less we don't have any clear cut resistant source for phytophthora in piper nigrum but at the same time uh, piper colubrinum is resistant to phytophthora right so we have to cross piper colubrinum and piper nigrum to develop hybrid progenies and probably we have to go for back crossing that is a long term approach but the problem uh, one is diploid one is uh, tetraploid so the 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 ploidy level is different between piper nigrum and piper colubrinum but even though the, there is a difference in ploidy level so we can uh, kerala agriculture university have, they have successfully attempted hybridization and developed a progenies so it is possible so they have developed a hybrid progeny between uh, piper nigrum and colubrinum uh, where uh, they have successfully uh, like identified the hybridity through morphological characters cytological characters and also the molecular markers so this is uh, the typical classical example of uh, uh, intragression breeding and way back in uh, 2010 we have uh, worked on heterosis in uh, cardamom there again uh, another potential crop where uh, we can develop hybrids and once you develop hybrids it can be maintained through vegetative propagation that is the advantage and uh, this is the hybrid uh, cardamom released uh, through our breeding process <laughs> and uh, turmeric uh, like uh, it flowers right how many of you seen turmeric flower how many of you have seeds turmeric seeds probably next time when you go to field no you see like uh, turmeric flower once at the just before the harvest you can see the capsules uh, in the in the uh, raceme so so we have developed uh, Uh, uh open pollinated progenies and we have released two varieties prabha and pratiba and also now we have like uh, intervarietal hybrids in turmeric so it is under uh, uh, isrp trial you can see this is how uh, this is the flower right so you can see next stage is capsules turmeric capsules and you can see the seeds and these are the different uh, stages of uh, seedlings um and we have many seedling progenies and uh, hybrids and this is how we maintain the uh, seedling progenies we have uh, hundreds of uh, seedling progenies and this is again uh, uh, very good example of uh, wide hybridization where vanilla planifolia and vanilla aphylla is crossed and we have developed the hybrid progenies because um, vanilla we have the problem of uh, fusarium right so vanilla aphylla is uh, resistant to fusarium 
so we have attempted a successful uh, hybridization and developed uh, progenies which are uh, uh, tolerant to uh, fusarium so our uh, next uh, uh, next uh, the breeding methodology is uh, mutation breeding right so especially the crops like ginger where like you don't have uh, conventional breeding uh, uh, approach where you cannot cross because there is no seed set so this is the only uh, like uh, technique available for the breeders to create variability mutation breeding and polyploidy where like you can, you can successfully double the chromosome uh, numbers and uh, and this is about the mutation breeding and there are already uh, like many attempts in uh, mutation breeding in ginger and they have successfully uh, created the variability and this is how uh, we did uh, like we uh, we exposed uh, rhizome buds of ginger to gamma rays and uh, uh developed uh, mutants and what we did is all the mutants we directly uh, like exposed to different pathogens like pythium and ralstonia we directly inoculated the mutants with the pythium and ralstonia so whatever escaped uh, uh, are considered as a resistant so we continued with the uh, resistant sources and we have identified a few uh, six uh, resistant uh, mutants three against pythium and three against ralstonia and it is under uh, uh, like yield evaluation trials and polyploidy breeding uh, where polyploidy is associated with vegetative vigor right if you if you induce uh, polyploidy if you double the chromosome numbers either in ginger or turmeric uh, the rhizome characters are going to be very vigorous so you can develop bold uh, uh, rhizomes by through polyploidy especially i was talking about uh, the high essential oil ginger right 4% essential oil ginger the disadvantage rhizomes are very small so the farmers are uh, are not very eager to cultivate those varieties so through one of my like a phd student where we successfully induced polyploids in those red ginger types so so that it can look bold and attractive to the farmers and so this is uh, one of the tetraploids you know iasr rajata uh, so we induced a tetraploid of iasr rajata you can see the boldness of the uh, rhizomes so this is uh, diploid 2n is equal to 22 here it is uh, 44 and also we have confirmed through flow cytometry you can see this is the diploid uh, flow cytometry this is uh, tetraploid and uh, and uh, even australia you know uh, like uh, uh, it has very small uh, uh, ginger area in australia only 2000 2500 hectares but uh, they are the world leaders in processed gingers you name any processed ginger ginger beer or ginger wine or uh, ginger uh, uh, breads or ginger candies so they are the world leaders you, you go to any countries if you pick up a ginger product it is from australia because ginger industry wants the bold type so that uh, it fits into their uh, processing machinery so it is in industry funded projects where uh, uh, the university of queensland uh, they have developed uh, uh, the hybrid uh, ginger called bud dream gold uh, where they double the chromosome number from 22 to 44 and also the rhizomes are very bold and uh, having said that um, the plant environment interactions right so uh, especially for uh, some of our uh, nutraceuticals it is very high we call it as g into e interactions genotype environment interactions so um, like you have to estimate the g into e one typical example is like like lakadang turmeric right where is it grown lakadang turmeric lakadang lakadang turmeric uh, no it is uh, it is grown in meghalaya right uh, so like the probably one particular area called jaintia hills in meghalaya if you grow this uh, lakadang turmeric where you likely to get 8 to 9% curcumin 
so the moment you bring that lakadang turmeric either to e road or nizamabad in telangana or guntur in andhra pradesh you get only 3 to 4% curcumin not more than that so that is called g into e interaction only it gives that particular uh, curcuminoids in the given environment so that you have to estimate so there are different ways to estimate so one is like uh, eberhardt and russell method uh, uh, then ammi method and gge by plot there are different uh, procedures are available and uh, this is uh, uh, one g into e interaction where we tried 11 important turmeric varieties from different locations and studied across india all turmeric growing regions 10 locations where we identified this table turmeric type right that is the advantage of g into interaction uh, through your uh, uh, either eberhardt and russell or ammi model you can clearly get stable genotype even if you grow in meghalaya even if you grow in uh, andamans or erod you will get you can identify the genotypes which gives stable yield and curcumin across locations so and this is again uh, same from this department dr arthi uh, who did the phd here presently with us uh, again we used uh, g into e interactions we identify stable uh, like curcumin bis dimethoxy curcumin and dimethoxy curcumin and uh, now the emerging area is uh, like controlled environments right like if you take tomato like you have different varieties for open market you have varieties for controlled environments uh, green houses so now like a uh, lot of people uh, want to grow turmeric uh, under controlled environments but the varieties available in the open market or varieties released from either ias or, or tnau are not suitable for controlled environments because uh, in the open conditions you look for genetic stability right the variety should be stable under open environment but in the case of uh, controlled environment like uh, uh, you have to look look for uh, uh, phenotypic elasticity right not stability elasticity you give the like uh, uh, like very conducive environment you should get 8% curcumin 10% curcumin 12% curcumin like whatever environment it is possible now to grow like if you want to give 24 degree celsius like we can control humidity can be controlled light can be controlled but we should get high curcuminoids so in that case like we have to identify the genotypes for uh, uh, that particular environment again this is uh, another area where the vertical farming Uh, like uh, many farms are started coming again identifying genotypes for this uh, particular condition because uh, like you have to see the light availability it is not like open field here light availability is very less like you have to uh, uh, target your selection for low light intensity genotypes which perform under low light intensity and another area is like uh, uh, participatory plant breeding where like uh, you involve farmers also in the selection process so that uh, generally what happens is we develop a variety then we uh, like trust on farmers to cultivate instead like from the very beginning like you involve uh, farmers also in the selection process like what they need uh, what is their requirement so that uh, varieties can be released and these are all some of the uh, typical farmers varieties in black pepper uh, cardamom and uh, and uh, another area like once you once you release varieties like uh, meeting the requirements is uh, meeting the requirements of planting material is very difficult either in the government sector it is very difficult in the icr system what what we follow is varietal licensing so it is like a non exclusive licensing system uh, where we license our varieties for multiplication to the farmers right so so it is non exclusive licensing system so anybody can take those who are interested uh, they can take uh, so that we can make farmers as entrepreneurs so they can multiply and they can sell it as a uh, either uh, presently icr is following like uh, 
we are giving uh, like most of our varieties under uh, licensing system and uh, this is the typical example uh, how licensing is successful you can see isr pragati 2015 we released so 2018 uh, like we have uh, 1000 tons of seed material only because of licensing we have identified uh, farmers from andhra pradesh karnataka and all uh, turmeric uh, growing uh, regions we have identified we have given a licensing so they multiply and sell it as a iasr uh, material so within a uh, span of 5 6 years we could occupy 10% of the turmeric area uh, uh, by iasr pragati only because of uh, licensing probably um, it is a time universities also follow this method because otherwise like we cannot give more than 10 tonnes, 5 tonnes, so that is the maximum capacity we can give. But uh, this is one typical example where uh, like we can... And uh, coming... Okay. Uh, contract of farming is one, madam. Uh, uh, because licensing means like you can get into MOU. It's a MOU with the farmer. So he develops, like we will visit and see that there is no mix up uh, quality. It is like a certification system only. So later uh, the farmers themselves, they'll say that it is a CO2, CO2 or CO3, whatever. Uh, presently for uh, turmeric, it is uh, uh, old varieties, it is 75,000 rupees. For new, new varieties, it is 1.5 lakhs. Uh, 1.5 lakhs for uh, five years plus five percent royalty so whatever they sell so five percent royalty they have to give it to the institute it's doing uh, very well in uh, most of the crops so uh, coming to last uh, 10 minutes uh, i'll just uh, up, touch up on the genomics um, you know, uh, like uh, four important areas in genomics, like uh, if you want to work on uh, DNA level, it is uh, genome or genomics. At the mRNA level, it is uh, uh, transcriptomics, protein level, proteomics, and at the uh, product level or substrate level, it is metabolomics. Especially like if you want to uh, target on nutraceuticals it is uh, metabolomics is the area like you have to target and uh, uh, this is how we started our research like 10 10 years back where uh, uh, especially in ginger like uh, as i said we don't have any resistant sources we cannot do any conventional breeding but uh, we have around 500 550 collections of ginger gem blossom completely susceptible to uh, Pythium and Ralstonia, but we have to identify resistant sources so that uh, the genes can be successfully transferred into ginger. Uh, and this is the one crop, our target crop, where uh, mango ginger is resistant to Pythium and Ralstonia. So what we did is uh, we did a comparative transcriptomics. So uh, we isolated uh, RNA enriched with the mRNA and uh, we uh, sequenced the transcriptome of uh, ginger and we uh, did a transcriptome of mango ginger then we compared to see uh, like uh, what are the genes responsible for resistance in mango ginger and we could identify uh, different uh, responsive genes at different stages uh, definitely the transcriptome will not give you the single gene which is responsible for the resistance it will not give it gives the uh, like hundreds thousands of genes differentially expressed genes so we have identified uh, differentially expressed genes at uh, uh, different levels like uh, pattern uh, uh, recognition receptors so that is in the upstream upstream of the recognition uh, process we call it as a prrs so we identified some genes uh, at the PRRs, then uh, transcriptional regulations, or genes, secondary metabolism, and uh, and uh, signaling transduction. So at the different stages, we identified uh, genes which are responsible for resistance in mango ginger. And so these are all uh, some of the genes. Uh, like just I'll tell you the like overall view so that you'll get uh, uh, idea. So we have identified. Uh, 
some of the uh, genes here. Uh, so one one interesting uh, like uh, pathway we are looking at is um, uh, Ralstonia resistant in ginger. Ralstonia, you know, like it is it is a pythium dwelling pathogen, right? It has it enters into the root of ginger, then uh, it occupies the xylem, right? Then it blocks the xylem so that uh, uh, plant get wilted. So that is the mechanism how Ralstonia operates. But the interesting factor is. It enters the root zone, it enters the xylem where it has to be multiplied to 10 to the rise 6. The population has to be multiplied inside the xylem to such a high population, then only it can uh, affect the wilting. So if you if Ralstonia want to multiply at a very high level, it needs sucrose inside that xylem, right? So we have identified some of the sucrose uh, transporter genes which uh, transport sucrose inside the xylem. So our uh, uh, understanding now is whether manipulating sucrose uh, transporter genes, whether we can uh, uh, hinder the multiplication of uh, Ralstonia inside the xylem. So, uh, so that is one area we are working on, even uh, like uh, Max Planck in Germany even uh, so they are also working on uh, similar a similar aspect in some other crops so so we have very interesting leads uh, in that uh, particular area and uh, now like uh, in the transcriptome like we have ginger uh, pythium transcriptome it is developed by rajiv gandhi center of biotechnology at trivandrum so they are working on ginger pythium uh, pathosystem where iasr we have developed uh, ginger ralstonia pathosystem and uh, and also with our collaboration with Australia, where we have developed a ginger fusarium transcriptome. So these uh, three of the major uh, pathosystems in ginger. Now what we want to see is uh, all three are xylem dwelling pathogens. It has to enter xylem, block the xylem. So whether all three transcriptome put together, whether we can identify some of the common candidate genes so that uh, uh, so we can target those genes and control all uh, three diseases. Otherwise, like if you identify resistant sources for pythium, then uh, you have issues with Ralstonia or Fusarium. So whether all three transcriptome put together, whether we can identify some of the candidate genes and uh, uh, spice uh, genomics, these are some of the areas like uh, uh, ESTs, uh, transcriptomes, uh, whole genome sequences, molecular markers, and uh, and this is uh, one area where uh, uh, genome wide association study like uh, QTLs in rice and other crops where you can develop a mapping population and you can identify the QTLs. But in the case of uh, vegetatively propagated or perennial crops uh, like uh, this association study is the best uh, model. You can take it forward. The turmeric uh, where. Uh, 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 where like we have identified the core collections for uh, some of the characters like curcumin rhizome length and rhizome width, right? So we did uh, uh, DD-RAD sequencing, double digested uh, uh, restriction amplified sequencing, DD-RAD sequencing, and, uh, and also we have recorded the phenotypic and the genotypic data by by combining phenotypic and genotyping, like now we have identified uh, uh, nine uh, marker trite associations. One uh, marker trite association for curcumin, and five for rhizome length, and three for rhizome girth. And uh, like I said, the mango ginger, we have uh, transcriptome profiling for secondary metabolite pathways in uh, black pepper. So, you know, uh, like that uh, the peppery aroma, we get it from. Uh, uh, pepper is because of the compound called rotundone. Now we have very, uh, very clear cut uh, candidate genes are identified for that compound. And this is how uh, the spice genomes as on today. Uh, yes, and today, like we have uh, whole genome sequence is, is available for 13 crops. You can see Chile way back in 2017, uh, the whole genome was available. And black pepper whole genome was uh, unveiled in 2019. The recent one is 2023, where cardamom whole genome is available. And uh, I just compared it 
it with arabidopsis and wheat so arabidopsis is considered as most simplest genome where wheat is uh, considered as most complex genome you can see most of our uh, genomes are uh, in between and this is how the pepper whole genome sequence uh, information use, is used to decode the biosynthetic uh, pathways in ginger and this is the ginger uh, uh, genomic uh, landscape where we identified some of the candidate genes for uh, uh, gingiber in uh, uh, biosynthesis and again the whole genome is used to identify the turmeric uh, biosynthetic uh, curcumin biosynthetic pathway genes and uh, a metabolome is the another area where uh, we can work on and this is how the omics has to be integrated into conventional uh, breeding to develop uh, varieties and uh, this is my final slide i hope yeah this this is the future the breeding for uh, especially spices like we have to concentrate on nutraceutical uh, breeding and uh, for that like i said that like we have 20000 uh, gemplasm extensive genotyping and phenotyping is required so uh, that is the first step then uh, integration of conventional and wherever like now we started getting whole genome in information from most of the crops where using that like we have identified snp markers indel indel markers ssr markers like instead of concentrating on rapids or issrs like we have to go to next generation markers and uh, and uh, like i'm i'm not sure uh, that the telomere to telomere uh, the whole genome sequence is possible in spices because uh, the concept is just evolving and it is uh, just started in rice maybe now like it is the stage we have to start now so that uh, because if you if you see the whole genome there are many many gaps so whatever the information published there are many gaps so now people are moving to t2 t2 t uh, sequencing so and uh, and more than that like we have to work together like uh, the public funded institutions private institutions so that uh, we can uh, take this uh, spices uh, breeding uh, to the next stage so with this uh, i thank you all for your uh, patient hearing so i am i am available here to answer some of your questions like if you have any thank you it's also coming into spices Yes. What are the what's being carried out related to garlic? garlic. The rubbering is a serious problem, no? There is a physiological disorder. Um, is there any work uh, conducted uh, related to that? But especially garlic, uh, at either Indian Institute of Spices Research or NRC Seed Spices, we are not working because uh, we know there is a separate institute for uh, onion and garlic. Okay, okay. But uh, it's a spice. Classified no? under spices. Spices. Uh, because uh, that is a. Uh, from vegetable department, uh, one student is ge getting fellow. Uh, it is under spices. Even chili, chili is important spices. Yeah, Ember and X, you are right, sir. Almost uh, 9,000, 10,000 crores out of 30,000 crores, chili is the number one uh, exporter. So, so, so you are not concentrating on garlic uh, no, breeding. No, no. Then another one thing, quick wilt and slow wilt in pepper is a serious problem. Yeah. Uh, um, what are all the works uh, being carried out? That's what, uh, ma'am. Like, like we have. Uh, and uh, 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 like uh, we can approach at different level. One level is resistant varieties. Mm. Like we have IASR Tevam and IASR Sakti. Both are uh, tolerant to wilt, doing very well in uh, wilt prone areas. One. Second is uh, rootstock manipulation. Like uh, Piper uh, Colubrinum uh, based can be used as a rootstock, and Nigram as a cyan. So the gra the grafts are uh, doing very well. Second. And third, like uh, the integrate, integrated uh, management strategy. Uh, not only that, uh, like uh, simple uh, Bodo mixture spray and uh, uh, copper oxide chloride drenching. So even uh, what we recommend is uh, prophylactic. Like you, you, even if you have disease or not, like you have to go for uh, like pre-monsoon one spray of Bodo and one uh, spray, uh, one drenching of COC, mid-monsoon and post-monsoon. Like if you follow meticulously these uh, three uh, drenching and spraying, we can control uh, uh, phytophthora. You can mail me like if you have any any questions. Like uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Morning.
நீங்க சொன்னாங்கல்ல சரி மேடம் பாக்கலாம் ஓகே Department of Spices and Plantation Crops, Kaisi and Ari Kwaimathur. I wholeheartedly thank you to Dr. Prasad, uh, Project Coordinator ACRB and Spices, and Madam, Dean Madam, uh, under this uh, program is uh, allowed and uh, organized one department, one program. And uh, it is, we are the leading, Madam, this program conducted regularly. So uh, and all, all MSc and PhD students, thank you very much for your Uh, it is like on uh, seminar we will benefited more sir thank you and also on behalf of our department of spices and plant research group first year msc and second phd students visit ihr koli code you please at the time harvesting or all the crops available means you please uh, tell me the uh, that uh, date and time okay thank you Thank you sir thank you